Okay, I'm I'm Al Davis. This is David Addy. Devin Addy's running the camera, and we're gonna see Cindy in just a little bit. And what we're gonna do is go into Clam Bayou in the basin part, where we're gonna look at what is probably 70 years of sediment from the city of St. Petersburg that's flowed in here. And the challenge is that this is a, a restoration area for the last 14 years or so, Swift Mud with DEP, uh, Aquatic Preserve Management Crowd, have been responsible for the use of taxpayer time and money to bring this back to a baseline objective of the 1950s when this was a viable estuary, accessible deep water with manatee, dolphin, had an active commercial fishing fleet in here at that time, there were sea grasses, there was a sandy bottom and an abundance of, of life. Today is the 25th of March, 2008. What we're gonna do is go out and look at a, a sediment bank and it's about a half a mile of sediment accumulation that is now solid land for the most part with lots of uh, growth on there that never was there when the place had circulation, flow, and tidal flushing. And the folks who are in charge of this project, Swift Mud, the Encote River Basin Board, would like to have us believe that this is both natural and beneficial. Now, for years, citizens groups have tried to clean this up to keep pace with the trash that's come in here. It's loaded with toxins. It's loaded with trash and debris from an unfiltered stormwater source right alongside the Twin Brooks Golf Course, which is really a point source of pollution. Lots of nutrients. And we're going to look at an area that's loaded with trash and golf balls. And the golf balls can be found as much as two miles away from the Twin Brooks Golf Course. Uh, there's been dumping by the city of St. Petersburg, dirt, construction debris, been a, a continuing practice and it continues now. The Swift Mud folks own some of the land over there, and St. Petersburg is of the opinion that since Swift Mud owns the boundary land, that their responsibility ends where the Swift Mud land starts. And Gulfport has been the recipient of things which have arisen and flowed through both St. Petersburg and Swift Mud. But the result with wildlife and bird population has been devastating, and the impact along properties along the side and public access to what has always been public land and public water is pretty grim. So we're going to put the canoes in the water and take a ride over to the mud bank. Okay, let's go. The area we're looking at is all sediment. It goes back for probably a third of a mile. And what was a drainage canal has gone from this, what was open water, six to eight feet deep out here, to now an area that's just solid mass of sediment embedded with trash and all the little white dots if you can see them out there are golf balls from twin brooks and they go down every few inches there's another layer of thousands of those golf balls the channel that used to be open is closed up at low tide there's no water there at all in fact there's freshwater entrapment and it's it, it's impossible for large marine mammals to get in or out of this place they used to be in abundance of them but no more First thing we see when we get here is a golf ball. And every place you look, every spot on this piece of ground, is a golf ball. There's another one, there's another one. And as we walk through here, you're gonna see them by the thousands. And this is what Swift Mud tells us is not a problem. And the golf course is exempt from the normal requirements for pollution. Nobody can tell you what the nutrient loading in here is, but if you look around, you're going to see no birds. If you look at this water, you rarely see a fish jump. And this goes on for two miles from here onto the beaches in Gulfport and Boca Ciega Bay and on out into the Gulf of Mexico. We have repeatedly asked that the project manager for Swift Mud Swim come down here and visit with us and see it from our perspective and he has declined. We've asked the DEP Aquatic Preserve Manager to come here and visit with us and see it as we see it, and he has declined. We've asked our local council member to come down here and see it. She has declined. And Representative Kreisman, who is our state representative, has been invited and declined. In every instance, our inquiries go back to the managers who say, all is well. And this is just a small sample of what comes out of here. We have not seen a blue crab in here in years. 
nor have we found an edible crab, a correction, an edible clam. The oysters are gone. The oyster catchers are gone. The greaves that require seagrass in a sandy bottom are gone. But it appears the golfers are still here. And this goes on all the way across the bayou. And if you take two inches of mud out of here, you'll find another complete layer of debris just from the golf course. You cannot walk through Clam Bayou without finding drug paraphernalia, golf balls, plastic bags, aluminum cans, anything that you can think of that you would not want to find in water is right here. This area just four years ago, low tide, was deep. And here's what we've got now. Buried in the grass, what little there is in it, a nice fresh golf ball. Now, we've had years of this. And the story continues that the land for the sediment ponds is not available. That it'll be next year, and next year, and next year. The Clean Water Act of 1972 the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System, the MS-4 Multiple Separate Storm Sewer System, and all of the requirements that the federal and state government put on it, according to Swift Mud for this place, have been met. The claim is that everything environmentally that can be done for this will and have been done. It's not true. Uh, we hear about the glories of Cam Clam Bayou. We look at the brochures printed by Swift Mud we see deep water, sandy bottom, and a manatee. That's not what we have. And we, uh, we don't understand it. We don't understand how the agencies in charge of this could ask us to accept this and consider this to be safe. The folks who live right across those trees in South St. Petersburg, for the most part minority people in lower income brackets with very little political influence, are the folks who use what few fish that are in here as a food source. And we're very much aware of bioaccumulation, the impact of toxins on fish and on the people who eat them. That's why there are very few birds here. That's why there's so few fish. I would ask those people who discount public concern so easily to come down here, bring their families down here, let them eat some of the things that they can find here, let them try it. It's a pretty sad situation. It speaks of a real challenge to government, and we hope that uh, some of our elected leaders will have the moral courage to demand that this be fixed. The reality is the Southwest Florida Water Management District and the DEP Aquatic Preserve Manager are embedded bureaucrats and they outlast political administrations. And generally speaking, if you ask a, a respected political leader to take action, they turn to the experts. And the experts by title and, and position, and that's the folks who've been there for years and years and see the politicians come and go. And we think it's time that the people who have the authority for this, the folks who are those embedded scientists who seem not to be able to come to grips with this, that they be held accountable, that there be an accounting of the money, of the time, and of the requirements of the Clean Water Act, and that this not be allowed to happen in the Clam Bayou Estuary, and that it not be repeated elsewhere. Trash, plastic, cans, rope, but mostly golf cars. And if you look at the maps going back 20, 30 years, open water. Go back to maps produced in 1905, and this was a, essentially a bay. Now, granted that estuaries change over time, but Swift Mud created the restrictions in the channel when they made the Osgood Point Nature Preserve, and that restriction slowed the flow of water and caused the solids to drop out more rapidly. The truth of the matter is, the more of that you get, the faster the rate of accumulation. And they've lost the circulation and lost the tidal flushing and lost the flow that were part of the objectives of the restoration. And a restoration, according to the EPA, is the return of an ecosystem to its condition prior to disturbance. This is the result of millions of dollars in years. Set. I have no idea what that is. Could be parts of the car, appliances, looks like one belt crate, 
Old can. Junk. And once again, here we are at sunset, feeding time for birds. We've come out here and done the Audubon bird count. The decline over the last 19 years has just been awful. Gosh. I don't know how we'll explain this to our grandchildren. We had the, we had the knowledge, we had the capability, and we just let it go.